Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally very warm welcome to you. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Press that like button. Um, you know, it gets the quality content out. Uh, and helps the algorithm is really a free way to say um, to say thanks for the uh, content that I put out. And uh, if you are thinking about joining uh, Trading 180, enrollment closes on Sunday, the 17th of October, not to open again for 2021. The next enrollment will be 2022. And if you are sitting on the sidelines, um, I highly advise that you uh, really kind of consider joining and really joining and getting a trading mentor. And the question I would ask you is what high level skill can you acquire only watching videos? If you've been watching videos for the past year or two and haven't seen the results, there's a missing link, right? Between just watching videos and actually being mentored. And mentoring, you know, gives you guidance, nuanced feedback. I give you nuanced feedback and support via Discord, uh, the Discord training trading group chat and give you personalized video responses as well as weekly group mentoring Q&A sessions where we have um you know, the guys come in and we all basically have a discussion about the week's events from technicals and fundamentals and whatever you want to discuss um, from a trading perspective. Also as well, mentoring holds you accountable, right? And you hold me accountable. So enrollment ends for 2021, uh, Sunday, the 17th of October. Please, on the 18th of October, Monday, if you were sending me emails, asking you know to to come in um unfortunately that's going to be it for the year so um yeah just want to get into that so let's get into the um the i guess the uh, fundamentals in the upcoming week on trading economics um slightly different this week uh because they haven't really updated their uh their, their normal um week ahead so we have to kind of go through the calendar so this week i think the uh, important uh um, news events really are keep an eye on China obviously we want to see GDP growth rate year on year um, that's important because if the uh, consensus or the forecast comes out uh, or the, I should say the consensus comes out um, less than thought then um, the really the go global growth and I guess global recovery is kind of slowing down and it kind of affects everybody. There's more of a risk off sentiment um, when it comes to China because China is really the world's economic engine and really for the, the for the world to grow, China has to grow. So it's always worth keeping an eye on Chinese, um, the Chinese macroeconomics. Um, we've got lots of speeches this, this week. Um, I think on Tuesday, yeah, we've got Governor Bailey speaking for the pound. We've also got the Australian RBA minutes as well. Um, we've got uh, Fed uh, Daly speaks, etc. So we've got loads of um, of speeches really about um, you know the, the the economy and what the, the central banks are looking to do with monetary policy. Uh, Wednesday, we've got inflation rates, which is always important. Uh, because central banks are looking at, um, especially the the, the, the uh, Bank of England, they're going to be looking at um, inflation rate as, um, uh, I guess, a, an indicator as to why they should be hiking or, you know, holding rates, right? Uh, we've got the European Central Bank, uh, some more speeches there. And I think Christine Lagarde is speaking. We've got inflation rate year on year for September as well. Canada inflation rate as well. So lots of inflation uh, reports. And again, like I said, inflation is really important. Um because it really, really kind of one of the facts that determine whether a, what a central bank is going to do with their monetary policy. Thursday, we've got the annual report for Australia. Um, new housing, ADP employment change. That's going to be something maybe keeping an eye on. Um, again, more speeches in the US. And also, I think, was it Thursday? Did we have... Um, I thought we had... Uh, um, Christine Lagarde speaking this week. Maybe not, or maybe I've missed it. Um, but yeah, so we've got some speeches, some more speeches anyways. And then we've got, again, Governor Lowe speaks. Uh, Friday, we have retail sales, not necessarily anything major. And um, yeah, I think anything towards the end of the week, I don't think there's really anything that, that, that pressing, to be fair. 
there is a for the for the Japanese yen as well. Something to keep an eye on is balance of trade as well, as that helps um, to determine uh, the direction of GDP. So some decent uh, news coming out, but it's really more uh, to do with the um, I think the next coming weeks is whether the you know the Fed are going to taper, and we're going to get into really the dollar and uh, the pound and the euro um, in the uh, the detailed uh, technicals and fundamentals. So as we always do, let's start off on the US dollar index and the US dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the euro, the pound, the yen, the major currencies. And uh, from technically what we've seen is prices really come up to uh, this this major, um, or I say major high, but a clear, obvious uh, high from September 2020 and we've you know seen obviously uh, the 94 areas the 94.50 has been um, an area where uh, the market has probably seen that as being a bit of an expensive area for now the Federal Reserve are looking to potentially taper there's tapering on the table but if you want to be a buyer with a dollar you want to really have some perspective you don't really necessarily want to be a buyer at the highs unless you really believe that dollar should go to the upside so any pullbacks into that zone i think are decent buying opportunities but you wouldn't be buying the dollar index you'd be buying any of the dollar crosses but there was some recent news us retail sales confirm third quarter soft patch is over so a strong performance from retail sales coupled with surging spending on travel and leisure suggests that the economy is re-accelerating after the recent covid uh, related sh uh, slowdown this should help cement expectations for a november 3rd qe taper announcement from the federal reserve so um, there was some positive news around um recent positive news that should lend a hand to the federal reserve tapering bonds tapering bonds is a reduction in you know government buying government debt but there's also um uh the the, the view i guess by alexandra tanzi that um that growth forecasts not necessarily a view but there are growth forecasts that the atlanta fed sees that the um, uh, GDP may grow only 1.2% in the third quarter. And the reason why is basically supply chains and inflation, um, there are um, some issues, right? So a few months ago, the US economy looked like it was roaring back from the pandemic slump. Now a recovery is starting to look like a grind, not necessarily a, you know, a, a full, um, as far as any kind of slowdown or reversal, as they say, uh, here, so none of the none of this means um, that the U.S. rebound is heading into reverse, says Nathan Sheets, newly appointed chief economist for Citigroup Inc. I think recession is too strong, he says, but it's certainly softer. So, understandably, you know things don't go in straight lines, just like uh, you know economic data doesn't go in a straight line, right? There's a bit of pullbacks, and also as well. One of the uh, one of the major uh, culprits, I guess, is missing jobs. So the economy watches have also been flummoxed. Flummoxed. If you don't know what that means, um, it means I think like confused um, and perplexed, I guess, by uh, the labour market. They um, they are more uh, sorry. There are more than ten million open positions, but the pace at which they're being filled has slowly uh, has slowed sharply in the past two months. Virtually every economist survey, surf, surveyed by Bloomberg overestimated the number of new jobs. So it's not that it's 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 a different type of problem, right? Because you've got lots of jobs, but people aren't filling those vacancies. That's very different from a usual um, downturn where you would have loads of people who want jobs but there's not enough vacancies right so the the economy is there it's just that the uh, uh for some reason um americans are not taking up the jobs right so um there are positives to be had out of that yeah but um ultimately uh the us dollar i think um the buying the rumor I, th I still think that the dollar is still a potential buy but obviously waiting for you know deeper pullbacks, right? This is more of a bargain. We know this was a bargain area or known as a cheaper area because prices made new highs. 
when prices start to come back to this area here that's the first area that you really want to understand or want to look for a buying opportunity unless prices do make higher highs and then you're waiting for a pullback into that higher low but um, again I would probably wait for a bit more confluence on the on the dollar if we do get a bit of a pullback as we head towards November the 5th which is only a few weeks away from now so you could probably see the dollar start to sell off a little bit as it has been quite extended uh, recently and I say extended but it's been bought um, so I think for me looking for a pullback on the dollar if you do want to get short on the dollar uh, then you know this week or into the you know foreseeable future for whatever reason then um, you know yeah looking at short trades right now is 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 you know technically is, is okay but really the path for these resistance is to the upside right We've been calling this for ages since June, matter of fact. We've been saying, uh, you know, buy, really kind of buy dollars or we've been looking at buying um, the dollar. Uh, moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen is screamed high. I've been waiting for a bit of a pullback and there is uh, some uh, pullback coming, hopefully. Uh, there's a demand zone there. It's still on the high side. I'm, don't really like it too much um, when you consider you know the the, the move that price has made um, in this kind of parabolic fashion for me I prefer prices to really kind of come back if it can to these uh, to if it can come back all the way down to this 11 um, area this one 11150 area that would be a brilliant buy or um, I think the first area to probably look for buyers is here but I just don't like the fact that it's really at an expensive area when you consider high, the obvious higher highs higher lows right those are the obvious ones I'm not keen on buying the the, the US dollar at 113s I'd really kind of prefer it to kind of come back down to the 11.50s and um, for those of you who are you know who are in the mentoring group you would know that the fundamental analysis spreadsheet that we use has really been talking about the uh, uh, the dollar yen one of the stronger pairs you can see right here uh, strength divergence um, ranked number six uh, where number two is really you know a buy and eight is really a sell eight being the Japanese yen is the quote currency the base currency is the dollar and it's really been like this for quite a few months now where the dollar has been well ahead of the uh, the Japanese yen and you can really see what's been happening right you can see what's been happening on the um on the charts right over the past if i zoom out over the past since the beginning of the year matter of fact so the fundamental analysis spreadsheet has not steered us wrong right it's literally just been buying on the dips yeah so um so yeah let's uh let's just basically continue to buy on dips i should say it's not financial advice but um i will continue to buy on dips if risk off starts to come into the market let's say there is uh you know some fear uncertainty and doubt that comes in then the yen should be the one to actually uh buy but you want to see really kind of proof of value yeah it's a proof of value meaning that you want to see price prove that there's some supply here and then a pullback into that supply zone before looking at getting short but only in a risk off really environment the path of least resistance for me is still to the upside um moving on to dollar swiss and again dollar swiss has pulled back a little bit into this zone um we've seen a reaction over the past couple of weeks i'm waiting for a probably, probably a bit of a deeper pullback to be fair um maybe down into this 91 area i do like but um for me again the path of these resistance is definitely to the upside even if it came down to this 90 area that would be actually fantastic buy i think um definitely not buying the swiss franc anytime soon uh but if you do want to be a buyer right now i would say probably now is a decent opportunity but I do think in the lead up to uh, the Federal Reserve decision to taper, I think the dollar might start to start to sell off as traders start to take profit um, from around these areas, Just get a bit of a pullback. And then, you know, as they do announce the tapering, then you'll probably see a, a bit of a buy. But again, we need the data to support the narrative for that, meaning that we need uh, some economic data to uh, to uh, support the uh, the tapering. Right. But again, in a risk off scenario, the Swiss franc would be the uh, the one to buy. And I think this area here is actually this 9350 area is a really nice um, uh, sell 
technical setup but just fundamentally I wouldn't necessarily look to take that moving on to the uh, dollar CAD dollar CAD I think it's probably the analysis from last week um, yeah I was saying that I wanted to be a, a buyer of the CAD against the dollar and uh, you can pretty much see what's been happening right I think um, the Canadian dollar has strengthened as well on the back of uh, rising oil prices so oil prices I think reached 85 right so um, the Canadian dollar uh, doing really well plus they had uh, some uh, great economic um, news when it come to when it came to jobs so I think any pullbacks into a supply zone um, is going to be a really nice trade not necessarily the trade that I'm interested in uh, but if you are looking at trading this pair I think that area there is really nice for a short nice technical analysis uh, short if you're looking to buy the dollar against the Canadian dollar for whatever reason then this demand zone here should be a decent buy looking at the New Zealand dollar US dollar and the New Zealand dollar really has been the um, the, the, the buy and uh, uh, lots of traders in the group have been looking to buy and I was saying that I really did want to get short um long on this from a technical analysis perspective if prices did come down here that would have been a really really nice buy unfortunately it wasn't again um just understanding that the rba are hiking rates yeah ahead of the federal reserve that gives you a really nice advantage when it comes to buying the new zealand dollar many of the guys have made some decent profits on the new zealand dollar matter of fact in fact let me bring up um a screenshot so uh this week uh rm in the group managed to get a nice 11 to 1 on the new zealand dollar yen from a few weeks ago and it finally hit and well done to rm and uh, many other traders have been trading really well and buying that new zealand dollar based off of again just understanding fundamental analysis Again, New Zealand dollar being the really the top trade, the New Zealand Swiss and the New Zealand yen, the top divergences, and those have been the, really some uh, some great trades this year. Um, so yeah, uh, just looking uh, to um, to continue riding that trend. So against the dollar, you know, the path of least resistance should be more to the upside. Again, a pullback into this demand zone should be um, decent for a potential buy if you can get one. But um, who knows, right? Uh, for me, I think, like I said, not, I'm not necessarily interested in this pair per se. But um, if you, the path of least resistance, I think, is definitely to the upside. Um, but you've got two strong currencies competing against each other. So it's not really a pair that I'm particularly interested in if you're looking to get short in fact that would be a decent short trade um, actually it's quite a nice technical zone you've got a supply zone as well as uh, a bit of some 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 confluence there with support and resistance right so that's decent as well um, moving on to the uh, pound dollar so the pound dollar very interesting the pound is a, is a bit of a conundrum I think there's a lot of stagflation talk around the pound meaning stagflation meaning that economic growth is kind of slowing off but inflation is going higher right and that's a problem because you want um, GDP to go up with uh, inflation uh, so that the uh, it can support rate hikes but um, I think that the, the pound, the path of resistance is still to the downside, although there are strong rumours around um, uh, still the, the, the Bank of England hiking this year. I don't personally believe it, but um, two bank officials uh, push back on talk of imminent UK rate hike. So Cathy Mann um, and uh, Silvana Tenrero um, see reasons to wait and the markets increasingly anticipate higher rates by December. Um, so two of the banks, Bank of England's policymakers signaled they're in no rush to raise interest rates, the first sign of a pushback against market expectations for a move by the end of the year. So, um, you know they they do have um you know some some uh, doves and hawks they're they're a bit kind of middle of the road when it comes to what undecided as to um uh, the majority but for me 
I think um, uh, I think they're just trying to talk up the pound. I don't think that they can actually do it. I could be obviously be wrong, but I think regardless of whether they do or they don't, they're stuck. I think it, it will even if they hike rates. I think it may hurt the economy, um, and uh, and I think the the pound is is a short regardless. So it's a unique situation, not something that happens you know every day, every week, even every year. But, um, you know, when the stars align to go short on a currency pair, whether the, the bank hikes rates or not is, uh, is is there. So if prices don't reverse from now, I, I, I fully expect this demand, sorry, this supply zone to be really the limit of the move. So um, uh, for me, not necessarily the best trade fundamentally, but there's a lot of bank analysis um, that we that and research that we uh, have in the group that are basically talking about you know HSBC are talking about um, and Barclays are saying you know that the pound is a bit um, ex on the expensive side, bit of fair value. They're looking to short as well, um, and uh, lots of other banks as well and analysts. So um, there's a lot of confluence there, and I don't know where the, no one knows where the turning point is. Of course, that's not our job to necessarily know the exact turning point. No one can predict the future, but it's our job to understand where the path for least resistance is, right? So if we understand that this was brilliant, if it's not, then this is looking like an even better bargain or better place to short the uh, the uh, the pound against um, not just the uh, the dollar, but against some of the uh, other strong currencies like the uh, maybe the CAD or the New Zealand dollar. Anyways, um, looking towards uh, if you're looking to actually buy the uh, the pound, then one second. If you're looking to buy the pound, then you're looking really for a bit of a pullback, right? You need a bit of a pullback into this zone before looking at getting long. Euro dollar, euro dollar. I. Um, uh, we were discussing this in the room and we were saying that, uh, you know, I think the 117s are going to be a really good area if prices can get up there to, you know, continue shorting the dollar. We do have a supply zone here, but um, I'm unsure about it. If there is a decent setup, you know, there is and it's a decent downside potential, then I think that's actually OK. But ultimately, we could see a weakening of the dollar as we get towards. And if, you know, if, if the dollar index matter of fact is actually at its highest and is going to pull back then you probably can expect um uh, the euro yen to actually uh weaken up and up to an area where uh banks and financial institutions feel that this is more of a bargain to buy the dollar against the euro the euro is really kind of lagging behind um when it comes to understanding uh, monetary policy you know guidance whether they're going to high rates or hold rates but they're still really looking to hold rates and uh winch uh, opened uh, to ecb flexibility but wary of train changing tools often so um the ecb are expected to decide on post crisis policy in december so Ultimately, um, they are behind the curve, yeah, when it comes to, um, you know, tapering or anything like that, or even looking to high rates. And uh, that's really been reflected in the um, in, in the charts. So if we do get, you know, a, a bit of a trade set up here, it's a decent, you know, short, but I think the best area for short trades is going to be around here. Again, if you are looking to buy the euro, there is some demand here, but not the strongest area of demand. Actually, matter of fact, it's decent because it's taking that level of supply. So, it, you know, decent demand here if prices do come down and then look for any kind of buy trades there. It's okay, not necessarily the best on the daily, but um, on a lower time frame, that's gonna look actually quite strong. So that 15, uh, 115 to four level is probably the limit, potential limit of the move to the downside, especially as we're in this waiting period between whether the Fed are going to um, taper um, or not. Moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen. Look at that euro has been, even though it's been weak against the, the dollar, the weaker um, currency um, is is the is the yen at the moment. And uh, anyone who's been shorting the yen has been in definitely some great profits. And again, as I say, you know, uh, a lot of times there's no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis and risk sentiment, right? Because ultimately, the price 
reflects value and this is obviously seen as an absolute bargain price and so traders are not looking to take profit here not looking to take profit here there's no reversal so if you were looking to short at these areas um you know in a risk on environment or um you know just buying the uh, the, the the yen um again you would have got slaughtered right um i say that to the, to the group all the time you have to understand why you're buying or why you're shorting or going long uh, currency it doesn't make sense to just look at a level and just say all right then well you know that's you know the level that you should short at fundamentals come first so with that being said um with this parabolic move there's probably going to be some profit taking here me personally um it's a decent if i'm buying the euro it probably would be against the japanese yen i'd have to see some sort of pullback and then a move higher and then a pullback before looking at getting you know long proof of value really before um understanding that i really want to be a buyer of the euro i think this move is definitely gone uh for now so um but if you do want to get short on this this is going to be the uh the area to look for any kind of short trades at the one three two fifty level currently zooming out yeah the, the the yearly high is here as well so we are at the really the kind of the highs of um a range yeah, so this is where the range is we're coming to that um, expensive area on the euro so any kind of pullbacks to at least fair value uh, i think i would look for probably a bit of some buy trades um moving on to the uh aussie dollar and aussie dollar really i think has been supported by higher commodity currency prices um, due to supply chain problems, but ultimately I do think at some point the Australian dollar should roll over against the dollar and um, Because they are behind the curve monetary policy wise and uh, Yeah, I do that's my uh, that's my bias so decent potential buy right now or just above that area so anything from now 74s to 75 round number would I think would be a decent um, potential um, sell trade uh, until the um, I think until the RBA come out and a bit more hawkish and there's data to support the narrative I, I'm, I, it's very hard to buy the uh, the Australian dollar um, against <coughs> the uh, the US dollar right and as bad but as bad as the uh, the Australian dollar is there are worse currencies and we'll see that when we get onto the uh, Aussie yen but for me i think the path of these resistance is still probably to the downside um so again this week if you do get any uh entries to the downside and you want to be you know in this pair then that's probably decent this area here is actually quite decent for a potential uh short trade um not really on my list of things to trade though and going to the aussie yen and again aussie yen um seeing again uh, the commodities rise oil rise zinc i think it was was rising we've just literally blown through these levels right and um so anyone who's missed out on this move again it, you'd have to really kind of wait for either a pullback and then something like that yeah to in order for you to get kind of long in here so you need to wait for a, a higher high higher low um whether prices will come all the way back down to these 81 levels is, is it remains to be seen right but um i think the australian dollar is potentially a buy at some point i just um uh, and i do think is undervalued to a certain extent not yet but i think if they start to turn their economy around i think the australian dollar is a fantastic buy um from a commodity currency perspective lots of upside potential and then moving to gold now gold again a stronger dollar means a weaker uh, gold right which means weaker gold prices so we did have price come up to this nice supply zone and sell off this week but again if if um you do see uh the dollar start to sell off then possibly gold starts to go higher um we've got a level here as well of demand so if you are a buyer of uh, of gold that's decent that's 1757 area is decent for a long trade um but again for me gold um i'm probably looking to trade it um at, at extreme lows or extreme highs right an extreme low and extreme high would be something like this where we get you know we've seen loads of touches here and i'm waiting for probably some sort of manipulation below the market or we've got a nice area here and maybe something like that where we see 
prices go above that and then come back inside so for me um, it's a bit middle of the road um, I've, I really haven't got an opinion on 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 uh, gold if anything if I'm if I'm bullish if I'm bullish dollar then um, then I'm probably going to be bearish uh, on gold but not looking to trade gold at all to be fair but I know there are gold traders out there and are there are times to trade gold right but um, for me I'm not looking to trade a gold at, at at um, this point unless inflation starts to really get out of hand and there is a definitely a change in sentiment from the uh, Federal Reserve and I think if the change in sentiment meaning that they're more dovish then I think gold is going to be a really 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 nice buy um, at any kind of demand zone anyways that's it for this week don't forget that we've got uh, you know um, the enrollment closes for this year 2021 and Sunday the 17th of October um, if you're on the fence again about getting a trading mentor and this isn't you know one of those trade rooms where you don't speak to the person literally you will speak to me you can ask me questions and I will get back to you create videos for you um, we have weekly analysis videos where you got you get to the opportunity to ask me questions about pretty much anything and I really am um, a trading mentor not what a lot of other uh, trading groups uh, claim anyways guys take care speak soon and uh, until the next video have a great one